takes are recorded for everybody to show you later on. Um, however, what I'd like to share with you tonight um, is my story in Clunise, um a little bit about my background, and uh, but more hopefully help you with some tips and training and uh, stuff that might help you to drive your business forward. Um, right, hopefully the technology is correct and we should be seeing my first slide in a little minute. Um, I've actually been in Clooney's for 20 years. <laughs> um, every time I say that it makes me feel old. Um, this house that you see here is a one bedroom flat and um, where I stayed with my two kids, Lee and Lindsay. Uh, just prior to starting with Clooney's, uh, um, I'll correct my story a little bit and uh, sorry, um, the year previous to Clooney's uh, I earned around about £8,000. Uh, before Clooney's I had actually been involved in direct sales um, over a period of time. I had been quite successful at this, you could make good money, um, but you can also have bad months where you don't get appointments and you don't make money. I did try to run my own office, I felt that if I had a team there's more opportunity to make more money, but with rent, rates, overheads, things like that, it didn't really go the way um, that I'd anticipated. So in 1992 I was looking for a new business opportunity um, and I was living in the one bedroom flat. I've got my well, little notes here <laughs> just to keep me right. I'll try not to move because I think it makes the screen go, go blurry, which is quite hard for me because I, I move about quite a lot. Um, the car I was driving uh, was a B registration Sarah. Uh, you had started with a screwdriver, <laughs> uh, it had a hole where your uh, key should go in and it had a hole where the ignition should be and you just turned it and it would start. It was actually a death trap but that's just the, the financial position I was in uh, before I started um, with Queenie's Eye. I forgot to mention when I was in direct sales, the one good thing that came out of direct sales is I was introduced to personal development. Um, belief, attitude. I'd been in part of plan and other sales companies, but I'd never came across this personal growth and getting taught, you know, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Uh, if it's to be, it's up to me. Um, sayings like that, I got introduced to people like Tony Robbins, uh, who some of you may be familiar with. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, however, it didn't stop 1992, me being absolutely broke. Okay. <coughs> Well, I was wanting to run my own business, but I had no money, as you can see. Um, but we were searching places like, if you imagine exactly what we do, where Queen is a business, is exactly how I looked for an opportunity. Uh, I was wanting to run my own business, but I had no money. I'd searched the newspapers, business magazines, exchange and mar, shop adverts, all the things that you should be using in your Queen is uh, I was one of the lookers that um, we're looking for today. Um, I was one of them. Mm. I was trying to find a viable opportunity and I did actually find something that I thought was fantastic. Um, it was a little heat and control device um, that reduced your gas uh, bills. Um, this device, I really did believe in it because there was a franchise for £10,000 to get it started. Now remember I didn't have a bean. Um, it cost £10,000 to get started. Didn't give up at that stage. Um, really thought this product was fantastic. You put it to your boiler uh, and it stops it firing up. Without it reducing the temperature, quite often your boiler fires up, slows down, fires up, slows down and it's firing up that doesn't need to fire up. So this actually saved you 30% on your gas bills and you sold. <laughs> I was sold in the product at the time but I didn't have £10,000. Um, but I believed in it. But the, the banks did and basically we spent hours, days, weeks, ages on this, what we thought was an amazing business plan. I uh, had a background in team building, direct sales, uh, we did projections, forecasts, you know, gross markup. They were great projections, but the bank thought they were too optimistic. Uh, maybe they were, or maybe that was just uh, my way of thinking at the time. But anyway, determination runs through in the end. <laughs> um, with no income and um, still not claiming anything, any benefits or anything like that, I haven't done, um, apart from what's coming up next. Uh, we were surviving, pawning the jewellery, as Andy said, the TV, the old wedding presents that were up the loft, um, whatever the junk shops would take, we pawned that. If, if it didn't move, uh, we pawned that. Now, we actually joined the business in August 1992, 
couple of things. First thing is, I didn't really see it. I didn't get it. I didn't want to be putting catalogues out door to door, and I wanted my own business. I wanted um, my own business. I didn't get it. Maybe that's you. I didn't see the big picture. However, when the money runs out and you can't put food on the table, um, you, you will look at the business differently, or I did. Um, I'm glad to say. So if you're not sure, if you've just got started and you're skeptical, that's quite normal. Uh, due to my partner's illness, we actually started and then stopped again, uh, which was another reason why the finances were so bad. Uh, we officially got started in February 1993, so my anniversary um, from when I officially got started is a year in February, but my anniversary in Queen Easy is in August 2012, and that'll be 20 years. Again, if you're new and you're looking at the business, perhaps tonight for the first time, or you've only been in a few weeks, um, 20 years in a business is a long time. I'm sure that'll give you confidence that if someone's been in this business 20 years and still smiling brightly, <laughs> which I always do, then that will let you know that this business definitely works. But let me show you how it works for me. I was still not convinced, I'm going to be honest with you, um, and I'll tell you what changed my mind, and you really need to think about this, guys, if you're in the business just now. I went to an opportunity meeting in Edinburgh, um, Stuart Orr, <laughs> and um, Gavin Scott was at that meeting. Now, Gavin had started back in 1992. He was one of the first people that we'd sponsored, and he was doing really, really well. Um, despite that, we were doing absolutely nothing until February 1993. But after the meeting in Edinburgh, I saw the products and I knew I'd buy them. I liked the products. And then they showed us the circles. Now the circles is what convinced me. Now if you're new, you've probably seen the circles. Uh, that's how we show the team building and how your income and business can grow if you build a team. So. Battle plan begins. <laughs> I, I first thing I did was I wrote a list of names I could show the business to. Sorry, terminology change. Excuse me, a wee second. Mm, just to see me having a coffin fit. First target was a hundred names. Now you may change two of your first targets to be twenty, thirty, forty. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you keep writing a list and keep adding to it. But we chose a hundred names. And we took 10 names out, spoke to them about the business, took another 10 names out, as well as doing other activities, which I'll talk to you about later. The retail plan was 150 groups three times a week. Did it fall this time? Um, the opportunity meetings. Um, now, that wasn't the opportunity meeting that, that I went to in Edinburgh. Started opportunity meetings right away. Put our books out on Monday and did an opportunity meeting on the Tuesday and um, it's quite a funny story because at the Park Hotel in Falkirk, uh, 50 chairs classroom styles, lots of people we'd invited or so we thought, what chart <laughs> to present the business in some sales aids and two people turned up. Uh, one was called Robert Craig, um, he was wearing his jeans, his denim jacket and his white socks and he had what looked like his twin with him, wearing his jeans, his white socks and his denim jacket. Uh, fortunately Robert joined the business and we learned by our mistakes. Um, no, we didn't stop having meetings, we learned to invite a lot more people to the meetings and to make sure our team did the same. We always did opportunity meetings every month, in-house uh, sizzles, uh, which are trainings, in-house trainings um, and massive activity. We teach you how to quantify your activity and you really do need to quantify your activity so you know how to get where you're heading. So you keep a note of your activity, use an activity tracker. But in those days, it was just massive activity. If you were outside your four doors, you would be doing activity. Nowadays, inside your four doors, there's loads of activity you can do as well with the internet and Facebook. But in those days, we did massive activity. I'll try and give you an idea of your numbers as I go through this. Important thing to get to success is everything was planned. Daily, weekly, monthly, even yearly goals. Okay, so, and targets. Every, everything was planned down to the last letter. Perfect planning prevents pretty poor performance. Uh, first time I heard that saying was from a guy in the RAF. Um, he actually said, 
a different word to pretty, uh, which I won't say publicly, but it means the same thing. You know, fail to plan, you plan to fail. First thing I did was basically what I was trying to say earlier, if you were outside the door, we were doing activity, leave a paper trail wherever you go. We left a paper trail wherever you go. Business cards, flyers, shop ads, posters, um, people in the street canvassing would speak to them. And I don't suppose you know anybody that's looking for a part-time income or business. Is one of my favourite sentences. Um, other ways to build a business. Get, get your DVDs, get your opportunity brochures, business cards, flyers, Facebook. Start sending every information to everybody you know. That's what I did. Um, and I'm going to cover this a little bit more further on. I'll just finish um, the testimonial. But my favourite saying is to use a mirror. If you ever say to yourself, should I speak to them about the business? Get a mirror. Put it under the nose. If it steams up, speak to them about the business. Basically, don't prejudge. You have no idea who's going to be interested. And sometimes when people see the business um, information, like myself, see the circles, they change their mind. So say less tomorrow, you'll see that later on, let the information do the talking. Okay, our first opportunity video was out to a chap called Robert Craig on route to drop off our first 150 books. It was a two and a half hour video, so we didn't stay, we got our books. We let the information do the talking. I need to speed up. February 1993, personal retail £2,000. Colleague, Robert Craig, turned over £1,500. And I think John Birch will remind me, because he's now back in the business, came from a flyer, I turned over £500 that period. Um, the income then was 564 so three weeks later, from pawning of jewellery, it's not a fortune, but it was a fortune to me, I can tell you, it made a massive difference. The following period, I'll just quickly go through the names and not the volumes, hopefully you can have a look at the volumes yourself. Robert was Warren Market, John Birch was a flyer, Lewis Foster, was a shop advert, he was a, ch a, ch a chartered surveyor, high tower was six foot seven, with no imagination, Warren Market, customer, Warren Market, Jason McDonald, friend and Warren Market. That was a gold distributor business and the income was £1,942, so within seven weeks, Cleans was paying us £1,942. And all we've done is put out catalogues and taught other people to do the same. But there's a bit more to it than that. I'll just let you see the first year and then I'll tell you a little bit more about um, what I've got for Clean Easy, but also how it was done as quickly as possible. I've got 15 minutes left. That's the clock up there. Um, Gavin was gold and beyond. Gavin's a superstar and was building his business like crazy. Jason McDonald was warm market. Uh, Gold, Debbie and Graham Borland, I'd met them in the REC, I had worked with the REC for about six months during 1992 and uh, Debbie was one of the girls that worked for, with me and she became a Gold distributor. Ray Wilson uh, was a fantastic uh, distributor, he actually came from an advert, Ewan Morrison, Fish Pond and Alan Wood came from an advert. Income £4,107 after 12 months been active in the business. Now, I know we say that Clooney's is not get this quick, but, um, or network market is not get this quick, because you have to develop it and patience and time. But that's pretty quick to me. And if you want what I did, if you, you do what I got, you will you will receive this. Um, plus we qualified for a trip to Hong Kong. That was a nice bonus. Um, just before I start on the, the, the training that the Clooney's are, I want to talk about personal development. As I said to you before, the first time I came across personal development was in uh, direct sales, a company called Kilpe. Um, I'd never heard of it before. It really makes a massive difference. If you believe it, you can achieve it. And attitude's the most important thing in this business. I watched John Collins videos every day when I was making up catalogues, if I was preparing the orders, or whatever, the John Collins videos would be on in the background. They had the Don Taylor book, the, the, the napkin presentations, the basics as it was called for then, Napoleon Hill, um, John Collins, Robert K. Kiyosaki. Um, I've not got a list of all the books to read, but the first book I read um, was The Basics by Don Taylor, and the second one was Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, never give up. This is my house today. Um, 
it's a bit empty at the minute because it's just me, it's too big for me, so I have a new house on the goal board. But from a one bedroom flat to a massive house, um, a really gorgeous area, I also have two other houses I bought um, really for the family, and my son's in one, and my mum was in one for the time. Um, and basically, I uh, drive really nice cars. This is the cars that I love. My CLK Merc, I drove this car for about 11 years. Not that particular one. I had a blue one and a maroon one. I uh, just changed last Christmas to a Saab convertible. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but I do prefer my Merc. What I will say, um, what you're seeing now on the screen is some publicity, newspaper stories and clip-ins. Uh, Rags to Richie stories, the press love them. But if you're new in the business, it helps you see that these stories are the real. Um, these stories are printed unless you're actually making a difference for your life. And you see that headline there, at last I can spoil the kids. To me, that's what Cleanies is about. It's about my kids, it's about my family. Um, that's Esther Ranson, it was um, Rags to Richie's type program, which I was a guest on. Um, this helps to clarify for you that this business definitely does the work. It does work rather. <laughs> oh, that was a dreadful slip. This business definitely does work if you work it. And um, there's Marrakesh and Port of the Keys. <coughs> Excuse me, two of my favourite trips. This is what the water's for, the cold. <coughs> and just some quick tips now in the last five or ten minutes. This is Lee and I in New York. Um, this next photograph is one of my favourites because this particular restaurant, if it comes up, is the, um, normally reserved for um, pop stars, television people, um, famous actresses, politicians, or Queen Easy distributors um, because Queen Easy paid for this trip to for Lee's 21st birthday. Um, and ultimately, there's my beautiful granddaughter Grace. Um, this is Rose, she looks so small there, she's 18 months old now, but this is why I'm doing Clooney's Day. Everybody's got different reasons for doing the business. This might be your reason. Do you want to be in Miami? You can open the chat and let me know if anybody wants to be in Miami, but it's telling me Texas grows. Um, or do you want to go to Gold and Beyond? Yay! Lots of people want to go to Miami, lovely, fantastic. Or gold and beyond, it doesn't matter what your goal goal is. I love the new uh, young goal just to increase your income by a thousand pounds a month. Go for that ten right for certificate and increase your income. This is fantastic. Thanks for all your feedback there, guys. So I have to speed up here. Um what are you prepared to do to get there? That's the big question. That is the big question. We go to these meetings and we say, oh, I want to go to Gold, I want to go to Miami, I'm going to be on this trip, I'm going to be on that trip. Um, but you really need to make a decision if you're going to be there. My favourite word is determined. Determination, you, you need to be serious, you need to be focused, you need to be determined, there's my favourite word, and you need to be committed. You really have to treat this business as if you paid 10 thousand or a hundred thousand pounds for it. Commit that one that word should say commitment. <laughs> um, something you do after the mood in which you said it and has left you. Now what that means is you may feel excited after this conference call or after Birmingham conference, a success seminar, millionaires training, and you say I'm going to be gung ho and I'm going to make changes and I'm going to build my business. But the next morning you don't have that mood. And that is when you've got to follow through. Something you do after the feeling in which you said that has left you. It's your attitude, folks, that make your difference. It's the only difference between success and failure. I know you've heard it before, but the only thing stopping you, and I'm not speaking to you uh, because you're here in the webinar. I'm speaking to people in your team who maybe want these targets. The only thing that's stopping them is you or is them and the actions that you or the people in your business take. If you do what I did, you will get what I got. It's as simple as that. Okay, and now go ahead in my slides, which happens uh, when you get excited. <laughs> speak to everyone you know. Um, speak to everybody you know. Sorry, I, I was looking at my wee results because um, I lost track. And now, I mean everybody. I know you've heard that, but write the list. 
speak to everybody if you've got a pulse, speak to them. Get that list in, have it organised with a prospect sheet, keep adding to it. Um, the follow up is the most important part, as you already know, the fortune is in the follow up. And if you don't follow up um, till the death, till the death, until you get a no, um, then you're doing yourself an injustice for the activities that you're, you're doing. Now, I think this is a repeat slide, but it doesn't do any harm to repeat it. Leave a paper trail wherever you go. Get the DVDs, opportunity brochures, business cards, flyers, Facebook. Please take advantage of Facebook. 30 million users. Don't go on there and play. Go on there and promote your business. It's a wonderful, wonderful medium for building your business. Start just sending information, whether it's post, hands out, or email, or Facebook, or Twitter. Send information to everybody you know. And as I said before, follow up. Just the fortunes and the follow up. Now, let me tell you a story about the peril divers. I'm going to be quick because I've literally got four minutes left. Um, the story about the peril divers. You've got two peril divers with 100 perils in each tank. The first pearl diver dives down, takes one of the hundred uh, shells out, brings it to the surface, opens it up, and there's no pearl. So he closes it and he thinks, if I look after this pearl, if I cultivate it, if I protect it, this um, oyster rather, it may grow into pearl. And he does this for a long time. Meantime, the, the chap in the other tank, dives down, brings up an oyster, opens it up, there's no pearl, he throws it away, dives down, picks up an oyster, opens it up, there's no pearl, he throws it away, and he continues to do that with each and every oyster until eventually he finds the pearl. That's exactly the same with business. Speak to some people, you'll get some. Speak to a lot, you'll get a lot. That's it. It is really, really is a simple business. Sometimes it's us human beings that like to uh, complicate it. The rods in the pond are only limited by your imagination. Who would have thought all these years ago, 20 years ago, that we could get leads from Facebook and the internet without actually leaving the house and doing these activities? But my advice is leave the house, do the activities, pick up that phone, speak to people. The internet's fantastic, but it will never ever beat be face to face or belly to belly. Just do everything. It all works if you do enough of it. Okay, this is Gavin Scott. He's the next shipyard worker earning 30,000 plus a month. He knew somebody called Bob Webb in his warm market um, who earns 30, 40 plus every four weeks. Um, he also knew um, a couple called Alan and Elaine Muffet who are also earning over 20,000 pounds every four weeks. And Alan Muffet knew another shipyard worker called Rob Foster, who's also earning over £30,000 a period. They've got £150,000 in income for these four people. Success leaves clues. Um, speak to people you know. That's the best way to build a business. Speak to anybody in your space. And what I would like to say is I'm going to stop there. I could carry on forever, uh, as you can probably tell. I hope you've understood my Scottish accent. Once again, thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks to Andy and Sue, little wave to you all uh, for asking me. And once again, keep up the great, fantastic work you're doing with these conference calls. Um, sorry, I'm in trouble now. Webinars. <laughs> um, I'm a dinosaur. Um, this is my first webinar, but um, I broke the ice. And I look forward to doing many more webinars and watching many more of Andy and Sue's webinars in the future. Take care, everybody. Speak to you soon.